Have you ever used Microsoft Copilot or other AI tools and become frustrated with the results? Maybe you have spoken to your AI smart speaker only to be confused with the relevant result. Or even drafted an email with the help of Microsoft 365 Copilot only then needing to rewrite the email immediately because it didn't meet your requirements. Or worse, simply delete the result. But here's the thing. Often it's not the AI tools that cause those problems. It comes from the way we communicate with AI itself. We can communicate with AI using something called prompts, which is the ability to give AI an instruction. But as humans, we often get involved in casual conversation. And that conversation can elicit many different requirements leading to really good outcomes. But with AI tools, it's much better to give them a very detailed and optimized prompt to get started with to get better results first time. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna share with you a framework to use to improve your prompts and get better results from AI tools, whether that's Microsoft Copilot, ChatGPT, or other AI tools out there on the market. I'm sure you'll be able to take this framework and improve the way that you use AI tools. And before we dive in and check out this framework, if you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button to find more great content just like this because did you know over 90% of people that watch our channel here are not subscribed to the channel? So why not hit the subscribe button and find great content like this every single week and also continue to help our channel grow? So let's go and check out what this framework can do for us. So what are frameworks? We can consider these as a basic structure for an underlying core concept or a system. And if we also consider where frameworks are used, how about we consider going to a job interview? When you sit down in front of your interviewer, they're gonna give you many questions. Those questions are often gonna cover competencies or behaviors that you should show to how to get that amazing job offer. But the problem is that when many people get interviewed and asked to also describe a situation or an area that they also have shown some great behaviors in, they'll often jump straight to the result. They forget to tell the interviewer about what happened in that scenario or the actions they took to come to that great conclusion. That then means that person has not given the right information to the interviewer and therefore maybe he's not showing the behaviors or competencies required for the role. But using a framework such as STAR, it gives us the ability straight in the interview to think about that question and apply this acronym, which means situation, task, action, and result. We take the situation that led to this amazing experience, the tasks and the responsibilities that we took to ensure that great outcome. And what were the actions that we took personally that then led to the result being this amazing experience for one of our customers? Using the STAR framework, we can immediately see that when we get a question from an interviewer, we can structure it in a way that gives the best possible response, meaning we have an ideal opportunity to also show the right behaviors and competencies and ultimately get that awesome job role. But I know what you're thinking, this tutorial, Scott, is not built around you getting a new job. And I absolutely agree. We're certainly here to talk about better prompts with AI and Copilot. But understanding that framework, we can now consider the framework we can use for better prompts. And that's something that I've defined as GCSE. Now, if you're in the UK and watching this video, you may think that's an academic qualification. But in this scenario, we're certainly gonna be focusing on it as a framework to improve prompts. But what does GCSE mean? Well, we can break it down into four areas. The first is, what is the goal of the prompt that we're also gonna to send to Copilot? The next will be the context. What's the context of what I'm also gonna send into Copilot? around the scenario that I'm working with. The next will also consider the information sources that I could use being the sources of information that we could give Copilot to generate a better response, maybe a document or a website. And finally, E is for expectations. With the response that comes back from Copilot, what are you expecting? Now, at this point, we're not gonna give Copilot the answer. Instead, what's the form of that response? Maybe it's a table of suppliers you're working with, or maybe it's a bullet point list or a paragraph or an email. 
being clear with expectations also ensures better results. So it's a simple framework, GCSE, to build out your better prompts. But if you don't believe me, how about we go into Microsoft Copilot and try this out? I'll show you a couple of scenarios using prompts I've seen many people use that get okay results, but applying the GCFC framework will see much better results from Copilot first time that you could use in all of your prompts moving forward. So let's head into Copilot and see how this framework can work for us. So we're now in Microsoft Copilot and I'm going to use the free version for work, meaning it doesn't have any access to our business data but it does come with enterprise data protections. What we can now do is share a prompt with our co-pilot. This will be built not using the framework I've shared with you today. We use a prompt I've seen many other people use before and not generate some great outcomes. So let's go ahead and send this into co-pilot. This prompt now focuses on drafting an email to John Smith, outlining that we would deliver the best Microsoft 365 IT consultancy and training for businesses around the world, and they should get in touch to find out more. Now, of course, if we send this into the co-pilot, it will go ahead and generate us an email. It won't come back and ask any clarification questions. And in the email it's now generated, we can see here, it's simply okay. It includes information that I also gave it inside of the email, but it hasn't taken any information on who we are as a company, or also the goal I'm trying to achieve. And also, there are no expectations around the type of email that's going to be generated and what we're going to be looking for when the person finishes reading this email. So changing the prompt to something that follows our GCSE framework, we can get a much better outcome. Let's now share another prompt with Copilot using a better prompt. So in our new optimized prompt, we can see here that we're going to draft an email to John Smith once again for me introducing our company, Your365 Coach. We're going to highlight our IT consultancy and training services, but the goal is to secure a meeting with him to discuss how we can help his business. I'm also outlining to Copilot that we want to set up a call with John to talk about our services. In addition, for the context, I want to mention that we deliver top-notch Microsoft 365 solutions, and to use our website as the information source to take outlining our services and unique offerings. That means we'll use specifics from the web to build out the email. For expectations, I'd like to encourage John to schedule a call with us via the form on our website and to ensure that this email we're going to create is also professional. Given this to Copilot, you'll see immediately a different result. It begins to search the web and find relevant information taken from our website. We can now see the email itself is very different. Yes, it includes John's name, but now also, in addition to mentioning our company, it's taking information from the web, covering the training and the consultancy and our masterclasses we offer to businesses, and also a link to our website. Alongside that, even has the expectation or the goal included. I'd love to schedule a call with you to discuss how we can support your business in maximizing the benefits of Microsoft 365. Just use the form on our website. So you can see this email is very different. The only difference being using the GCSC framework, the only difference being with Copilot, we're very clear in the goal, the context, also the information sources and the expectation to create an overall better email that we can now paste into an email of your choice and send over to John. And taking this another step further, let's consider Microsoft 365 Copilot that has access to your business data. We could use the GCSE framework to also get better results to catch up on meetings. Let's go ahead and share a prompt of our Microsoft 365 Copilot to summarize a meeting that I also missed earlier on this week and to get a summary from Copilot. And by adding this prompt that I need a summary of this meeting and simply selecting the meeting from my Copilot experience, we can now have a summary generated by Copilot. But the prompt is very open ended. It's a very short sentence just to let the Copilot know I wasn't able to attend and to summarize the key points from the meetings. And while this response we've got back from Copilot is helpful, it could be better. For example, there isn't a goal that I've set for Copilot. What am I trying to achieve by getting a summary? What's the expectations or the context I'm setting? And where's the information coming from? We could also take much more information to Microsoft 365 Copilot from emails or Teams chats. So let's optimize this prompt with our GCSE framework and see that we can get a much better result from Copilot. 
With our new prompt now added into Copilot, you'll see it's very different, once again following the new framework we've shared. At this point, I'm of course asking Copilot to summarize the key decisions and action items from the meeting. Rather than a broad summary, I'm specifically letting Copilot know what I'm looking for in the meeting summary. In addition, I've asked Copilot to review my recent emails and Teams chats in relation to Project Greenspace and include that in any responses. The expectation is I need a concise summary that highlights the main outcomes and next steps, which is separated into sections around the meeting itself and anything in my Teams chats or my emails. Sending this into Copilot will now see that once again it reviews a transcript taken from the meeting, but this time it will go further, looking across my Teams chat messages and emails. And looking further at the response from Copilot, we see an overall better outcome because I very clearly stated the goal of what I'm trying to achieve, summarizing the meeting points and understanding action items that's very clear from the information Copilot has returned with. In addition, we've also set out those information sources, picking up information from my emails and Teams chat, which I included in that initial response. There's no need to ask further questions to find that out. And also the expectations were set around what I needed it in what information. You can see here that the structure is now set in different sections, just like I expected from my Copilot prompt. So immediately in one single prompt, we've got a much better result with more information in a structure that we can also better understand using the GCSC framework. So now you can use GCSE frameworks to improve your prompts. What else should we also consider when working with co-pilots or AI tools? Well, first off, be very specific. If you're vague in your prompts with co-pilot or AI in general, it often inserts information to help the prompt that may not actually be true, or even worse, it may hallucinate and come up with information that you actually never shared of it, but it believes to be correct. So where possible, always be specific with your co-pilot or AI prompts to ensure the best outcomes. And don't forget to tell co-pilot or your AI tool the tone and language to respond in. I find often that AI tools like co-pilot are fairly neutral in their tone. If you want to draft out a professional email, well tell co-pilot exactly that. If it in a particular language, once again ask it to do exactly that as well. What I will do with multiple languages is I'll ask it to generate it in two languages, one in English and one in French. That allows me to ensure that the tone and language used in the English version will also translate well to the French version. So once again, ensuring you tell your co or AI tool to set the tone and the appropriate language. But how should we also consider co-pilot or these AI tools? Often I hear from many people we should consider these to be interns or assistants in your team. They don't know how specifically you're going to work, so giving it as much information as possible in the prompt will yield better results. Just think if it was an intern or assistant, giving it vague information as I mentioned earlier will also yield pretty poor results. So do try and think of your co-pilot assistant as just that. And don't forget, when co-pilot or your AI tool also responds in a positive way, also let it know that it's done exactly that. If you want to follow on the conversation, Copilot, as an example, will know it's got the right answer and to build on it. Whereas if you don't, it can also alter the result and change it. So making sure you share with your Copilot or AI that it's actually answered it in a correct and positive way is a great way to continue the conversation on. And remember, whether using Copilot, ChatGPT or other tools, if there's an ability to reset the conversation via a new conversation or a new topic button, hit the button when you need to do exactly that. Thinking of this as humans and casual conversation, you can imagine the confusion you would have if I started talking to you about what I was doing on the weekend and immediately stopped the conversation to ask for feedback on a contract. You may not be able to respond to that question more adequately because I changed the conversation with no real context. Ensuring the conversation thread is relevant to that particular topic is really important in AI tools. So now you know this framework, you can use it both in the workplace and at home and get better results first time from your AI tools. And that will make you more productive or even more efficient than what you were using AI for previously. And if you like this video, hit the like button to let me know. If you haven't already, hit the all important subscribe button to find great new content like this every single week. 
and we don't want you part of the 90% who don't subscribe. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.